I'm getting fairly close now to having this ASR33 completely repaired and uh, just a few minor jobs left to do. At the end of the last video I sorted out a problem where the machine was randomly printing rogue characters. So that's now dealt with, it now prints 100% correctly from the keyboard and also from the serial input. So I connected this through to a PC running a terminal program and I ran it for a while and it was uh, fine. I didn't video that, I've shown that in a previous video in a previous restoration series. And that's now all working fine. Uh, but I also have test tapes that I run through the machine and I run these for quite a long time. A machine like this that's been standing idle for decades tends to kind of bind up and even if you're very careful and clean it and lubricate it then once it's been run for three or four hours it will tend to settle down and change slightly and uh, certain faults might creep in that uh, need to be corrected and I like to make sure that uh, these are given the best possible chance of being reliable. Now what I found was although it's working a hundred percent reliably with the keyboard and serial input when I was running the test tape through it and this particular tape just runs through the alphabet and uh, numeric digits over and over again and so what we have on the printer output is exactly that running from A through Z and then one up to nine and then zero and then line feed carriage return and it repeats but if you look down here you'll see it was fine this was about the fifth page I'd run through and we get down to this point and you see that things start to go wrong but then it very consistently does the wrong thing it's doing exactly the same thing every time so instead of printing A B C D E etc it's printing I J K D E F it does that every time. Uh, again the best thing to do in response to this is to look at the character set and uh, see what's uh, possibly going wrong. So if we get the character set for this and we look at uh, A, B, C, so A, B and C and then look at the values we should be getting for that we notice that the, um, the values are 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 obviously in binary um, but if we then go down and look at what we're actually getting instead which is i j and k if we look down here we've got i j and k if we go across and look we're actually getting exactly the same values we're getting one one zero and one one which is exactly the same as we should be getting for a b and c the only thing that's different is bit four for a b and c it should be zero with i j and k it should be one so what seems to be happening here is we're getting an error in bit 4 and that's the bit that determines which direction to rotate the print head. So it's rotating the print head in the wrong direction. But it's only doing it when it's reading the paper tape. For everything else it's fine. So that would tend to indicate that the switch for bit 4 in the tape reader is either faulty and it's not making proper contact all the time uh, or there's a fault in the wiring somewhere going through to the uh, main connector. So what we'll do is we'll get the test meter and we'll see if we can test the switches. Okay so we've got the multimeter. I'll move the camera across so we can see this a bit better. So I'll take the negative lead of the test meter and I'll clip that onto the common connector for the switches which is there. What I can now do is take the, uh, the lead from the test meter and we can probe the individual switches. I need to operate the solenoid of course otherwise they'll all be open. But when I operate the solenoid, so I'll close that, it's now shut, what we should get is continuity for any switches that are closed. And what I found was when I do this bit four is indeed showing a high resistance so uh, it's just the switch contacts are still dirty I did clean those in a previous video but um, as I said there was an awful lot of dirt and debris in this reader and although I cleaned it very carefully it looks like a bit of dirt has got onto the switch it's very light to switch um, spring pressure on these so I'll go back in I'll clean it again and uh, see if that improves things at all 
Once I've cleaned the contact on the tape reader, um, it started working fine, so it now reproduces exactly what's on the tape. I've run it through probably 10, 15 times, and it's fine. Um, the next thing I want to look at is actually a comment um, someone made, and it relates to the layout of the punch and the tape reader. And they were saying that um, it's not very good design, it's uh, difficult to load the tape, and uh, the punch tends to feed paper out and it uh, gets in the way of the reader. Um, this was actually intentional, that's exactly how it was intended to be designed. And uh, what you have to bear in mind is what this was originally designed for. And it was a teletype, it was connected to a phone line, and it was used for effectively sending emails. It's um, the, the, the precursor to sending emails. And so it was laid out like this um, with a, a very good uh, reasoning behind it. So the way this was normally used is you would type out the message or the text you wanted to send, but you would not be sending it as you typed it. You could do that if you wanted to, but normally you wouldn't. And um, you'd have the punch turned on. The punch will be punching what you type, so you'd be in local mode. You'd be typing, punching to uh, tape what you were typing, but you would also have the end of the tape fed into the reader. So if we just get that set up, so I'll just turn this on, it's going to make some noise of course. I'll feed out some spaces. Okay, so I've got a whole, let's turn that off. So I've got some spaces on the uh, punch tape. What I can now do is put a small loop down feed that directly into the reader and we've got a small kind of buffer loop going down. Now this normally overhung the front of the um, the stand that it was bolted to and there was a big chad box um, that sat underneath the left hand side but towards the rear. That's why there's a tube on the chad outlet is to take the chad towards the rear of the machine because the front was used and that's why there's a cutout so down between the tape reader and the punch is a cutout and that's to allow tape to loop down into that space. So I'll turn this back on, we'll type a message, unfortunately you can't really see the message um, but I'll zoom you in later on to look at that. Um, I'm just going to type something in. Um, I've got the punch on so it's going to punch the message direct to, direct to the tape but it's not going to um, feed it out through the reader. The reader's turned off. I'm going to have the machine in local mode so all we're going to do here is take what we type on the keyboard. We'll see it appear on our local machine here. It would not appear on the remote machine, but we are going to uh, punch what we type to tape. Okay, so I've typed the message I wanted to type. I can now read through it and check I haven't made any mistakes. If I have, I can type it again or make corrections. Um, but we've also now got this loop of tape hanging down between the punch and the tape reader. And what we can do now is turn the machine into remote mode, either duplex or half duplex. And whether we see what is being sent down the line will be dependent on whether we have half duplex or full duplex set. But the point is that what we can then do once we've set the machine to remote mode using the switch is we can enable the tape reader and we will then send what we have just typed down the phone line to the remote machine. So in other words, we've written our email We've now got it kind of buffered in memory on the tape and what we can do now is send that to the remote machine. I'm going to add a few spaces to the end. Okay, so I've just added some spaces to the end of the message. What I'm going to do now is turn this into remote mode. In fact, I'm going to put it back into local mode. I don't have this connected to anything um, so I can't send uh, remotely, but we can simulate uh, remote mode. I'll put it back into local. I'll turn on the tape reader, and then what appears on our printer here 
is what the remote machine would normally see. So we'll turn this on, start the reader. Okay, and we've now sent our message out to the remote machine. We've got a copy of it on tape here, and I've turned uh, the reader off, of course. We would then go back into um, local mode, type the next message, and that's how you could use this machine. It was intended as a way to write the text you wanted. You weren't occupying uh, a lot of um, line time because it sent the message fairly quickly. It wasn't relying on you to uh, type it very quickly, you could type it as slow as you wanted, put it into remote mode and then send the message and you were done. Uh, okay, so uh, that's why this um, the, the punch and the reader is laid out the way it is, it's just meant to make life a lot easier uh, for the people operating the machines and then of course you have a permanent record of the, uh, the conversation or the message that was sent. Let's zoom you in so you can see the, the message as it was sent out and give you some idea as to the fact it just duplicates whatever you send. I didn't press line feed and um, new line before I started so it's uh, overwritten one of the characters. Okay, so um, that's the machine pretty much working. It's uh, doing what it's supposed to. Uh, the reader is now working, the keyboard works, the printer works, the serial works. And um, the next thing we're going to do is look at the outer cover. So I'll get that um, dropped over the machine and uh, we'll just decide how we're going to proceed with this repair. Okay, so that's how the machine looks at the moment. I've restored the keyboard, of course. I've restored the lifting cover, I have restored the metal cover plate, I've straightened the front trim panel, but I'm not going to do anything with the main part of the case other than give it a quick clean. I'll leave that to whoever acquires the machine to give that a good uh, polish and clean and get it looking nice. One thing I mentioned in a previous video was that the um, reader and punch were kind of add-ons. And you can see that here, unlike the case in the first series of videos I posted where this was all one piece, these parts are separate. So this is a separate piece of moulding, as is the um, paper reel holder. So you could get this without this um, section on it, and you just get the, uh, the, the printer teletext part of this. Um, so it's quite an interesting history these machines had. There were a lot of them made. And uh, what I want to do now is find a, a good home for this. It's now fully functional. I've got a few very minor tasks to finish off and um, then it's ready to uh, find a new home. Now there are a few things missing off this. The um, reel support for the paper uh, tape reel is missing. But that's just a tube that um, someone can acquire a new one of those and make one. Same with the support for the paper tape reel. Um, I'm not going to provide any paper tape with it, that will be up to whoever the, um, the person that gets this uh, is to uh, find the run source of that. Um, but I want to see this put to good use, so uh, once again, as I said at the beginning of this series, if you think you have a good use for this, um, I'm going to be giving this away for free to anyone in the UK that's willing to come and collect it. So let me know what uh, your use for this would be. So um, before we finish this uh, series, um, I'm just going to have a quick look around inside, show you um, the finished article, so to speak, and uh, hopefully some will be interested in acquiring a, a nice ASR33 in fully functional condition. It does come with a stand, it does have the um, power transformer with it, and of course it has the drive electronics uh, for the tape reader. So. Um, it's a very nice machine, it actually looks quite nice, it just needs the rest of the case to be given a very good clean.